In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a tank for boa. This will include a breeding tank and a grow tank. This will also be a budget setup because uh, yeah, you guys know I'm not the richest person in the world. I'm going to look for the cheapest tanks I can get. We're going to use a cheap racking system and guys the shrimp will be donated to me. Okay shrimplets, let me show you this blank canvas that we have to work with today. Let's start with the tanks. These tanks are 112 litres, which is 30 gallons US, I do believe, roughly. The tank is 80 centimetres long, it is 40 centimetres wide and 40 centimetres tall. The tanks are standing on a metal rack frame like this. And this thing is very, very strong. I have it fixed to the wall at the back via a couple of screws and washers. And these shelves are rated to 150 kilograms each. These lights are 30 watt LEDs and they are fully waterproofed. At the back I've actually added waterproof connectors and they're held on just now guys with a couple of cable ties which I think is more than strong enough. They're actually all doubled up too. Let me give you some specifications on the actual lights themselves. So these are 2600 lumen lights and I think they're pretty bright as I said they're 30 watts and I do believe these are 6500 Kelvin. Underneath the tank we have added a layer of foam matting and this helps to protect the glass. Next we're going to add Akadama double red line, one of my favourite soils, straight to the Aquarium. Let's give this a level out to see if we have enough soil in this tank because we want to use at least half the bar. The top tank had enough substrate, so let's do the bottom tank exactly the same. Next, let's add the water. Next guys, we are going to add our buffer because our water here that's in our aquariums is filling up is pure reverse osmosis water, right? So I'm going to use Salty Mineral GH Plus. This is the salty buffer that you would use to remineralize your Caradina tanks, right? So for this, one scoop is for 20 litres of water, so we need five scoops in each tank. And yeah, I'm not doing this... Uh, the way that you would do it if you had shrimp in the tank but as we have no shrimp in the tank so far this is perfectly fine right and all this salt will dissolve as we add the filtration so we are going to use sponge filters so this is the frame for them like this and i like to use these stainless steel connectors in the ends because i find that the plastic ones leak air so this is the actual body of the sponge filter and what we're going to do guys is we're actually going to add in our tanks one mature filter from a from a sponge filter downstairs and one of my successful tanks because I want these tanks to be successful so it makes sense for me to take a sponge filter with bacteria in it, in it that is suitable for the tanks and the way I've done it guys is I've taken four sponges like this and we're simply going to add one mature filter to it like this and we're going to add a fresh one to the other side like this right so we just have to do this rinse and repeat and this can go basically into the tank right shrimp place so the sponge filters are going to get a little squeeze here and this is not to spread any mulm in the tank this is just going to be to make them sink and so the end is coming out and I want these fully extended so the the sponge filter is actually almost as close to the bottom as possible before this top part comes off It'll make sense once you see it. And there from then on in, you can adjust the height of your riser, right? And I'll show you that in a second as well. 
let's do the second one and these guys are going to go side by side like this and this is just something I wanted to test and try this way guys so this fits really really nicely there okay Shrimplets let me show you that again in case you missed it on the top one because it is kind of hard to film on this side let's push the filter all the way to the bottom push it against the glass give the sponges a tiny squeeze like this make sure they're all the way down and guys what I like to do is I like to tilt the sponge forward just a tad right so there's nothing being trapped in behind Okay, let me show you from the bottom ankle, like I promised you. So the filter needs to go all the way on the base, but you want to push these filters slightly forward. And this is so nothing gets trapped behind them. Less malm, etc. And then you're basically going to push it in like this and all the way to the bottom until it hits the gravel, you see? Push the sponges on both sides. Give the filter a tiny squeeze just to get the air out like this next guys let's turn on the air I want to show you this first and this is where my air supply comes from it might not be too clear but my shrimp room is directly below this room and all I've done is I've drilled a few holes put some pipes through we have an air line on the far side and we have a narrow water pipe on this side and this is not permanent guys as in it will only be connected to the downstairs water works when I use it right any other time it's going to be disconnected so there's no chance of flooding up here we have our airline coming up like this and it goes to a little manifold there if you can just see it and then from there it goes to this the actual filters themselves right so typically this manifold and the one downstairs will be always open and we'll adjust the flow with these little stainless steel valves that I showed you before right so yeah, this one is actually primed and ready to go so let's see how much air we have up here not looking good not looking very good actually so this is more than enough flow for up here and this tank is not even filled yet so i'll fill this up with the rest of the water and we'll start the next stage Okay, so today is day three and we are going to add some moss poles to this because I want moss walls on, on the back side on the, and on the side over here on the right hand side and the best way to do this I think guys for us is to add some moss poles like this and this will grow up and it will fill in lovely. You, you'll see, let's add some to the tank. So I'm going to spread these out just evenly. I actually tied 14 of these so we should have more than enough for our wall here it doesn't have to be perfect either but I think it, what is important is that it's going to grow uniformly so we'll try and keep it as straight as possible right then we're going to go up one level to about halfway right and the moss will grow generally this much guys right so the bottom moss here will grow up to this level and this moss here will grow up even further let's put the next one in like this and the next one and guys I have a video on how to do this do excuse the noise that's my dog scratching at the door because she thinks I'm talking to her I have a video on how to make these on my channel if you're interested and while we're here guys let's add in a leaf that's actually been prepped from another tank big catapa leaf and these are very very important in the shrimp tank as soon as you see these start to disintegrate even a little bit you should add another one let's add a piece of wood as well and we add no rocks or stone to this type of tank at all guys because it's important that we keep our ph low let's do the bottom one yeah just be aware guys when you do this it's not uncommon for these suckers to come unstuck but for the most part they do tend to stay on so i'm going to put two on this side You can see the aim of the game here is just to try and evenly spread them out as much as possible. 
because yeah they, these will grow quite thick and I do believe I made one extra so we'll see where we can put that in this one extra for each tank because I wanted to see how this would turn out maybe five on the back wall probably get it looking really good one in the middle here this wall's going to look nice now I have this in my other th other tanks already this is not an experiment I know how this turns out so yeah please go and check that out let's add in the wood and let's put the wood on the opposite side from the tank above just so it's not exactly the same like this and an Indian almond leaf right? you can use oak leaves walnut leaves and Indian almond leaves right so yeah let's see how this turns out because it's going to look beautiful eventually Hello guys, it is day 7. Let's have a little look at the tanks because some things are happening already and as you can see our moss is starting to grow. You see it on the end here already and that gorgeous you can see past my beautiful fingers. And let's address some things that I can see that we need to do here and that is just how plain and boring it looks in the bottom. So today we're going to add more leaves because I think a good shrimp tank needs lots and lots of leaves. And we're actually going to add some Val as well. I've always wanted to put Val into an Akadama tank like this because I do actually have it in one of my other tanks downstairs. And it looks pretty nice, right? And it takes uh, a lot of nutrients out of the war. It's really, really good at exporting stuff, guys. So, yeah, that's what we want to do. I'm actually starting to notice the odd little animal on the glass. It's more noticeable up here. That there's little snails, little worms, little copepods in here. You can see them on the you probably can't see them, but they're here. And uh, yeah, I thought today we'd put in some stuff, right? So let's have a little look over here, right? So we have our val here. Let's talk about what I've done. Let's go over to the light. Because yeah, if you want to plant val into a tank, you're probably better adding just a little bit more soil than this. So what I've done guys, just to get this started, is I've trimmed the roots and I've added a ceramic ring and written. What this will allow us to do is this will allow us to set this on the bottom, like this, without it floating up and away. So that'll be it there, right? And what this will do then is it will grow runners and stuff once the roots become established, if I have to. Or if I want to, I can remove that ceramic ring right. So that's held in place really, really well. And this is an easy method to get your valves started. Right? So I'm just going to plop them in front of the filters here. Just at the back. And it will grow along. And we'll have a lovely moss wall in front of it. Right? So you'll see. This is going to look gorgeous, guys. Trust me. I'm a shrimp expert. Kinda. So next for the leaves, these are walnut leaves, let me put them over here and uh, guys I'm just going to drive my hand first and then we're going to pick up all these leaves. And what I'm going to do here guys is I'm just going to split these up into two and we're just going to take our dry leaves like this, these walnut leaves and we're simply going to put them on top of the water like this, right, just sink them a little bit and these will sink naturally themselves. So add another little handful and this will be enough for this shrimp tank and you can use all kinds of leaves guys as long as they're generally brown they're normally safe and this will turn the water a little bit tannic which is okay with Akadama because Akadama can pull the water pH down but it doesn't tend to hold it down for as long as other substrates like ADA, Amazonia. So let's just put these in and let all of this sink. Today is day eight guys and uh, I thought these tanks still looked a little bit bare, right? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna add some decorative manure to the tank. Now these plants are absolutely gorgeous. Let me show you under the light here. And they add a real difference in color 
to the tank and they have little hues of pink and green and they're, they're striped, they just look so nice. Okay, so let's put them in the tanks. We're going to put them uh, roughly one third on the, from the right hand side and we'll do the other one the opposite way on the other side. Look how nice these look. All like the zebra stripes and stuff. Put you there. Now the soil is ADA Amazonia, so it will release a little bit of nutrients into the soil as well. Let's grab the other one. This one is slightly smaller, but it's still really nice. And we're going to do the same, but this time we're going to do it from the opposite side. So we're going to do one third from the other side. Okay, that is not a gorgeous plant, guys. Right, and of course I want it to be the pretty side to the front, so that's what we're going to do. Well hello there shrimplets, it has been approximately 12 days since we set up this tank and they are ready. I've actually been testing them all for their uh, values, the parameters, their ammonia zero, nitrite zero. Nitrates are between 5 and 10 parts per million but that isn't high for a shrimp tank so we don't need to worry about that. pH is under 6 which is great, there's actually biofilm and all this stuff as well and guys the good news is the shrimp are actually here and they're sitting right underneath the camera waiting to go into the tank race. So if you're wondering how I'm able to actually add these shrimp to the tank so early, it's because there is no ammonia in this soil and guys because we use mature uh, filters as well. You go back you'll see we use mature filters. So if you use mature filters guys that cuts your cycle down time by at least half in my opinion. Alright guys, let's attach our drip acclimator. This is the bog standard one that I use in all my tanks like this. Ear stone on the end, stops shrimp getting sucked in, but there's no shrimp in this tank yet, so it doesn't matter, but this is just a standard one that I use for everything. Stick it on like this, and we'll suck on this, water will flow through, and it will they will be drip acclimated. Right before we do that though, we probably should try and get the shrimp into this container, right? So let's get them in there. Let's see if we can just Turn this down like this and see if you guys can see what I can see. Yeah, we can. You can see everything. Right, so these are from a breeder in Holland called Raymond. I will put a link in the uh, first comment. And guys, just before we go any further, when you do this, just make sure that you check the top for any shrimplets. Because as you will have seen in one of my previous videos, they do get trapped in all these little creases when the bags are closed, right? So. Always check there, carefully open up your bag like this and open it. This one is double bagged, these are breather bags, that's why there's no air space and they should just pop it really really easy. Look at that. Look at that. Right, and then this is the next part that you want to watch here, is you want to watch around this crease in the top. You see how the shrimp jump away there? They want to actually stick onto areas where there's creases and stuff because the you know that gives them traction, right? So what we're going to do here, guys, is the last twice I've done this, I've kind of made a mess of it. So I'm going to try and hold the whole bag or put it down or something, and I'm going to try and cut the top off again because the last few times I've done this, I've made a mess of it and the bag just collapsed. But it is so much easier to get all the shrimp out if you can actually manage to do this bit without actually. Dropping the whole bag right, so I'm going to, like I just did there again. <laughs> Let's get them out, and it's quite normal for them to stick in the bag like this, as you can see. And all you have to do here, guys, is, is open the bag gently, like this. Tip your container to one side, and put some more water in the bag. Like this, you see it, and they'll flow, go to the bottom. And then you tip them again. You might have to rinse and repeat this thing a few times, right? And you want to put this little piece of uh, mesh in with the shrimp because that gives them something to hold on to right and guys this part is especially important if you saw my last video you will have seen why as well we always check all these little creases and corners because yeah they can have baby shrimp in them right so the last video that we did there was at least four or five baby shrimp stuck in some of these creases right so always check the creases let's add in our water and we're going to go guys with just two or three drips a second until this container is at least half full and then we'll put the shrimp into the tank. I'm going to open it just as much as possible. This drippage is enough, you can see here. Two or three drips a second. And we're simply going to put this in the floor. 
and we'll be back when it's at least half full. Right guys, our drip acclimation is complete and I have to say these are really really nice shrimp. So let's get them into the tank and we'll get some macro photography of them tomorrow. But I just wanted to make sure to get these into the tank and acclimate properly. And, you know, as stress free as possible so you should be able to see them coming out here. They're really really nice. There's at least a couple of bows in this one and potential bows as well, right? So shall we get a wee bit closer maybe? Uh, so over the coming days I'll be able to take some more footage of these, oh they're so nice and yeah we'll be able to get some better pictures of them for you guys because I know that's really why you're here right so after this we probably won't see this tank again until guys until there's masses of babies in here So it has been approximately 7 months since I started making the video for this entire setup and guys I'm finally proud to tell you that it has been a rip roaring success right so let's go over the things in the tank and yeah what I've changed because there has been some changes there's an elephant in the room in some of the tanks where something's different from when I set up and I'll explain that as, as I go along as well um, so yeah what do you think? It's looking fantastic, isn't it? The shrimp have been breeding like crazy. We have a good, I don't know, maybe 10 adults and of very good quality. And we have probably about 40 young that are maybe about a centimeter in size. They're almost at that size, guys, where they will be going from the breeding tank to the grow out tank, right? And what this will do is it will allow our breeders in here to breed more, right? So that's the whole purpose of this video was to show you me setting up this this boa setup so if you wanted to breed shrimp like this you could right and by the way guys i'm going to plug my own book here as well if you want to learn more about shrimp keeping specifically bee shrimp keeping how i'm able to breed so many bee shrimp then please do do check out this book right links are in the description right so let's go over the things that have changed in the tank from the beginning right so let's go over the obvious one the obvious one is the UGF filter that's in the corner here. If you can just see the bottom tank here, you probably can just make out that there is a difference between the Java moss in this tank and the Java moss in that tank. If you have a keen eye, you'll be able to see. And I'll just tell you what it is, guys. It is the browning. Right? You can see in this tank down here, the algae, the, the Java moss is uh, browning. 
and this stuff is green right but it wasn't like this maybe a month or two ago something like that and what i'm basically saying is the akadama here is okay for breeding shrimp but it's not perfect right it lacks nutrients because when you set this tank up there's there's no ammonia or anything in this actual soil itself so it's not a fantastic soil for plants right so that was the mistake i made with this setup was assuming that there'd be enough nutrients in here to support the amount of, of uh, moss that I wanted to grow in this tank for the shrimp, right? And let's be very clear about this as well, guys. You do not 100% necessarily need tons and tons of plants in a tank to breed shrimp, right? Shrimp's main food source in the tank is the biofilm, the stuff on the glass, right? And if you do it properly, uh, you will have lots and lots of biofilm. I don't know if it even comes out in camera, but it's all over the glass. I've cleaned the front panel just so you guys can see a little bit cleaner. And yeah, it is it's looking good. So the issue I had, as I said, was the moss browning in the top one. This happened first, this one here. So I added a UEG filter with some ADA V1 in it. And it basically changed the way the, the tank looked. Within probably two weeks, all start to go green again like this, right? So I noticed it with this one, and then this start tank started to go brown, and then I put a UGF filter in here as well, right? So if you if you want to have plants in a tank, I suggest you get something that um, with active soil is is quite nutritious for plants, that is designed for plants because Akadama isn't. Yeah, guys, this video took probably about seven months in total to make from start to finish so I would appreciate if uh, you gave the video a like and a subscribe and guys this method here as I said if you follow the guidelines in my book right this works for all the shrimp this is what I'm doing downstairs and it really really works right so we have tons and tons of shrimp I'm not sure if it comes out in camera so much you probably see them zooming around and stuff but yeah guys love you all thank you for watching this very very long video and uh, I'll see you in the next one happy shrimp people